And now for our section on interpreting the weather. So measuring the weather empirically. So here are the list of instruments that we use. So for temperature, we use a thermometer. For wind speed and direction, we use the anemometer. And that you can see is the little spoon here. And this wind direction, wind vane. And for pressure, we use a barometer. For precipitation, the instrument is called a rain gauge. So that's basically kind of like a tube that has millimeter readings for rain. And then other factors include visibility, humidity, air quality, and cloudiness, which all have their own special instruments. So now here's a bit of activity to test your weather knowledge. So it's an open-ended question. So what are the reasons for the path of travel and strengthening and weakening of Hurricane Laura, which happened in August 2020? So you can pause this video and write down some notes, and then I'll reveal some points in the next slide. So here are some uh, ideas to explain the hurricane's path. So we can see the hurricane, uh, well, it started as a tropical storm, so it has maintained its status as it went through the Caribbean islands. So you can see here, as it went through the Caribbean islands, it keeps being a tropical storm. So then it strengthens rapidly in the Gulf of Mexico because of warm ocean temperatures. And then it weakened after landfall because of a lack of moisture. And the shape of path, we can see that the Gulf Stream and wind ocean currents affected this path. So looking at this section here, as it hits the US and then weakens as it goes inland. So now here's another activity. So what big weather conditions do you expect in each region of the US? So a hint is to look at the fronts, pressure symbols, and satellite imagery. So you can also pause and jot some notes down before I reveal the answers. Yeah, so you can see on this map, kind of breaking it down here, the low pressure systems here indicate um, probably uh, weather of precipitation. There's a and then there's some fronts going through here, cold fronts, stationary fronts, and then a really long cold front, which is also going to connect it to another low pressure system in eastern Canada with a warm front and also an occluded front. And so this seems to be a sort of a cyclone here. And then the high pressure indicates the areas of good weather. So you can see in the Midwest to US, the weather is good. And there's also high pressure over the province of BC. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the weather in the U.S. Southwest is uh, low pressure, so not so great weather. And then, so now I'm talking about how climate change exacerbates weather events. So the warming Arctic creates an unstable jet stream. So then this creates prolonged, more extreme weather events. For example, there's a huge heat dome in Western North America in 2021 that shattered heat records. And then it sometimes leads to unusual cold fronts reaching subtropical areas. So you can take a look at this link here. Then these effects can exacerbate warming, creating a positive feedback loop, which makes things worse in the long run. So thanks for watching and um, don't forget to like our Instagram page at Kangeo Workshop Series. And so you can also look at these other resources for further interest. So these are some real-time weather maps, including Ventusky and Windy, which are amazing. And then real-time isobar maps from weather.gov, the government website. And they can find some interesting weather stories here from CBC.